Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and aggregated blockchain news show on YouTube. Look, look, look. There's going to be swearing, smoking, and drinking. If you don't like those things, leave now because you're right coming. Three, two, one. Bang! Yay, brothers. Welcome. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. All right. We have a good one for you today. It's an interesting show. It's not the usual. There wasn't sort of much out there. Um, you know, the usual stuff I like to talk about, like, you know, um, you know, projects doing something like, you know, me, I mean, I'm, you know, not even, not even Justin Sun was saying anything. <laughs> I was like, damn, there really is nothing going on. Cause that fucker's tweeting every day. So yeah, there wasn't much, but don't worry. Shamari digged up some stuff, dug up some stuff, digged up, <laughs> dug up some stuff. And so I'm going to talk about this one thing. This was a big deal. Actually, this was all last week. And I noticed that these uh, crypto sites are talking about this this week. So it must be a big deal. You guys know I'm not so techie techie, right? I'm just here about, look, is your blockchain working? Is it servicing someone? All right, well, you know, give me a sack of your crap, right? But look, a crypto halving, the halving. They're going to half the... Uh, I don't know what it is, half the difficulty that it takes for the miners to mine or something. Well, we'll read it. We'll read it. Uh, we'll read it. I got to read it again. I'm not even going to lie. I really just kind of looked it over. I didn't even really read it, read it like how I usually do that, the normal stuff. Now, this is a piece of shit right here. Wow. And I didn't really read this one. So if I look surprised, don't be surprised. Oh, man. Gemini. Gemini shut down a bunch of accounts today. Um, and you know Gemini, that's the Winklevoss twins. Those are the ones going for the ETF. And uh, yeah, and they were looking good. So I didn't really read it, so I don't really know what it is. So we're going to get there. <laughs> we're going to read that. And then bang, BitTorrent. Yes, brother. Some of the brothers asked me, Shmori, do a story on BitTorrent. I was like, well, if there's something to talk about. Well, bang, there was something to talk about. So here it is, my brother. Bang, just for you, buddy. <laughs> I like this kid. All right, because he's young. And he was like, do something on BitTorrent. All right, so so we shall do just that, my brother. Let us begin how we do. We go bang, and then we go bang, and then we go bang. There's. And then we do a little refresh to get the fresh numbers. Look at the fucking range, man. We've been in 300, 3,400 for like what? A good five days now, right? Man, that's the tightest range <laughs> I've ever seen Bitcoin, right? Remember Bitcoin used to go like hundreds of dollars a day, though. Know? Sometimes thousands of dollars a day, man. Moving around volatility. Yo, very, you know, shit. I mean, that is the... That's the epitome of, you know, consolidation, non-volatility. Like, wow. Oh, look at this. Look at who's at number 10. Binance coin. Bang. All right, brothers. Let's do how we normally do. All right. We got the usual suspects. All right. So how we do it is, if you're new around here, we go bang, bang. Top 10 in market cap. Let's look at our usual suspects. Ah, but we got a new entry. Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, EOS, Tether, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Tron, Stellar, and look at this. Bang, Binance Coin, up in the number 10. All right, who'd they beat out? Oh, the Bitcoin SV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, remember Cardano was up there for a while there uh, last year? All right, anyways, though, you know how we do it. Now, let's look at our market moves of the day. Ah, well. That's what happens with the tight range, doesn't it, motherfucker? Single digits up to single digits down. <laughs> single digits up, single digits down. Oh, there's that green one right there. Oh, Binance Coin. They got that boost today. Okay. But single digits up to single digits down. Whoops. My bad. Single digits up to single digits down. Yeah. Single digits. Mostly single digits down to single digits up. Oh, righty then. 
Let's see if, oh, let's see that Gemini dollar down there. Hold on. Right, because that's what we're going to talk about. I, all right. All right. So uh, let's see what was on sale today, brothers. Bye. Uh oh, remember I told you? Remember I told you yes? <laughs> That's funny. Remember I told you yesterday? Remember this bit colon thing? It was what was it, like three hundred percent up, and I said, "Watch, watch! Tomorrow it's going to be down." There it is, forty-four percent down. But it still means that you're two hundred and, you know, was that forty-six percent up? So bang! All right, look, here's what's on sale today, brothers. Uh, bit colon. Pundi X, NEM, ARC, Waves, Bitcoin SV, Zilliqa, Dent, Komodo, and Nano. All right, let's look who made money today, brothers. Bang. All right, not much. Uh, top 10 earners of the day, Aurora, Binance Coin, Theta, Metaverse, Revane, Nexo, Veritasium, Chainlink, Repo, and Augur. All right, let's see the total market cap of the day and market moves. Shit. 111 man yeah there's a bunch of money that went out of the market where were we at yesterday oops shit weren't we at we were at a bunch more than that and 16 and change in tours of in terms of well let's look at it here it is let's look at the total market capitalization charts actually right weren't we at a i thought we were at like 14 billion yesterday well 114 billion you know what i mean Oh, now my computer is just going to be all lame and not even let me. All right, there we go. Oh, let's look at a daily chart. All right, let's look at the seven day. Just real quick, just real quick, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a murderation. Bang. All right. So some guys got. So the total market cap, you could see, like, there's the tight range we've been in. For a minute. Look, look, look. And uh, for a minute. And and then today, bang. So some guys got but the the when we did the um the 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 the, the hold on, let's look at it. When we did the um most losers, it wasn't that much. Wait a minute, where's my shit? It wasn't that much. Anyways, whatever, man. All right, come on, come on, come on. Shamari Fox stick, man, shit. All right, come on, let's get to the stories. All right, sorry, guys. I was getting caught up in my research. That's what I do all day. I just research stuff, dig around and find the information and stuff. All right, sorry. <laughs> all right, so look, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin mining having has the potential to create a bull run. That's all these people are talking about. Like, listen, look, look, look guys, I'm reading you this story. Just because it was the big news, all right? So, but I'm going to tell you my opinion. My opinion is, doc, it's not going to fucking matter. Uh, the only people that are here are retail investors that are in this space right now. Yeah, yeah, hodlers, you and me, and and then the cult members of each, of each coin. That's it. So, the halving isn't going to make people put more money in. The only thing that's going to create more money in this space, and this is what I want to tell you guys, I believe, is when the institutional investors arrive, when they get here, that's going to give us our bang, you know. Other than that, the market's too immature for them even to know that they should put in more money. Do you understand? But I'm going to read this because, you know, it's just, man, it was like on every single website. So, historically... The lead up to a block reward having has usually been met with a bullish run in prices. Um, so there was historic. Why isn't this even? Hold on a second. What's going on here? Oh, all right, all right, all right, whatever. Why isn't it even highlighted? I guess I'm going to read you the whole thing. So there's a historical reason to believe that the likes of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin bank commodities could in the midterm future start a bit of a bull run because of their block reward having which is approaching for the three prominent which is approaching for the three prominent cryptocurrencies 
When it comes to block reward having, proof of work coins, such as the ones listed above, become harder to mine, bringing into the equation the scarcity. Bang! Black, black, black. What have I been preaching to you guys this month? Scarcity. Well, actually last year too, at the end of last year. Scarcity. Man, like I told you, I didn't even read this article yet. <laughs> Yo, this is good stuff. All right. Tonight, actually, I didn't read any of these. I know it's fucked up, but anyway. Scarcity of the assets in terms of supply and demand. What have I been telling you guys? Supply and demand. I mean... Those are, that's it. That's what markets are about. I mean, it's that simple. Like, you know, more people want Microsoft stocks. There's only a limited supply of them. All right, well, they go up in value because more people are willing to pay more for them, right? So it is because of this. that there is evidence suggesting that harder difficulty in acquiring the aforementioned coins could lead to bullish tendencies for their prices. I hope so. That'd be nice. Like I told you, man, you know me. I've been preaching to you guys to get the uh, the uh, the large caps. I've been preaching to you guys to snag your large caps now, right? So I hope this works out. I mean, I know it's going to work out. I mean, all the... Uh, all the uh, ETFs and uh, futures contracts and that are all Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. So, you know, I mean, we're going to make money, but this having thing now adds to the mix. In other words, oh, there we go. That's the way to say it. So, in other words, it makes my intensity to want you to buy these more, more. Wait, is that the way to say it? It makes me want to tell you, come on, guys. Now, really. Right? We already know. Bang! The ETFs, the futures and stuff these boys are bringing. I told you. We read the Fidelity thing. You know they're bringing that fucking 401k. Fucking Fidelity, come on. They're the biggest fund managers on earth. $5.2 trillion, brothers. Come on. So I've been telling you, get your Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Now I know what you're saying. But Shamori, you taught us about ROR, rate of return. I think I get more money. If I put it in IOTA or VeChain, luck, luck, luck. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But here's my shit now. We got the ROR and we got ROI. So ROI, pfft, all right, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, <laughs> that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be your fucking return on investment for sure. Like in the beginning. And so what I'm thinking is, look, these are just, look, this is the part of the show. You know what I mean? I don't tell you what to do with your money, but I give you my opinion. So my opinion is now, look, I can get a mad rate of return quickly because these are going to be futures and all this stuff with Bitcoin, like on Ethereum. So rate of return will happen. Or sorry. Return on investment will happen bang fast. Then I can take that money, <laughs> pile them. I mean, I did say this to you guys before, but I guess really I'm pushing it right now, I guess. Luck, luck, just my opinion. Like, but what I'm saying is, I'm not pushing it on you guys, but what I'm saying is, my belief is more heavier now. I'm, it's a stronger you know, belief in what I want to do with my portfolio than when I first said it to you guys. And I, if I can get ROI, so let me give you a scenario well, what I'm looking at. Bang, I start getting some ROI. Um, um, going into fourth quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter this year. Yeah. These guys, when they get here, they're at first not going to be rocking all of our V-chains. Like, I mean, I'm thinking... This is just speculation. So remember this. This is speculation. I mean, I'm a market guy, but this is pure speculation what I'm saying to you guys, okay? I mean, I'm usually right about stuff. I just, <laughs> you know, 
Don't get angry if it's wrong. So my feeling is when they first get here, bang, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, murder. Yeah, that's going to shoot up right away. But because they're professionals, there will be a decoupling of the price. Bitcoin will go up and it will bring prices up for stuff, but not in the same way it is now because you know, they're exclusively buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum because they're commodities, right? So our V-Chains, IOTAs, Stellars, Cardanos, whatever will go up in terms of Bitcoin goes up, everything goes up. Bitcoin goes down, everything goes down. They will go up, but not the same way as it does now. Do you see the nuance that I'm getting at there, guys? And so what I'm thinking of is getting my ROI off my, my large caps and then refunneling that money back into the smaller cap stuff. There we go. There you go, Shamari. That's how to say it. That's what I'm saying. Because, I mean, Bitcoin, like and Ethereum, man. I mean, how many times do we have to read that, you know, those are the first products that are going to come online, right? Bitcoin will go up and drag our other holdings up with it. Yes, your holdings are going to go up. But not as much as when they decide when the true decoupling happens, when the true rule book is given, and now they know where things are and they can, you know, trade freely, like freely. You know, they know whether something's a security or a commodity. They know the tax implications, all of it. That's what we're waiting for, right? You know, you guys know that. If you've been around here, that's what we've been waiting for for a long, long time <laughs> since last year. And uh, and so. ROI, bang, Bitcoin, like on Ethereum, bang, grab that money, shuffle it down to your smaller caps, and that's your ROR. <laughs> Yo, that's your V-Chain, your IOTA, your Stellars, bang, that's the where you're going to get your millions, I think, I think, all right, let me uh, move on, let's continue on with the regular programming here, boys and girls, so, uh, so there's a historical reason to believe that the likes of Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum could, in the midterm future, start a bit of a bull run because of their, oh, and then we're talking about this happening thing, right. Fuck, I trailed off, all, all off into my, what I'm doing with my own trading strategy. <laughs> you arrogant motherfucker, you're just talking about yourself. <laughs> I'm just giving you ideas, man. You know. Black. All right, but the happening, my bad, brothers. Which is approached, which is approaching the three, four, the three prominent cryptocurrencies. All right. When it comes to block reward halving, proof of work coins such as the ones listed above, and I know a lot of you guys aren't down with these, uh, with the proof of work stuff, and I agree with you too. I agree with you. But, 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 these are commodities. So different. I don't know. The proof of work stuff. Yeah, yeah, no company, no corporation is going to use some proof-of-work crypto for their shit, right? Yeah, what if people stop mining it and the fucking shit fall, fails? That's not going to happen. But proof-of-work, yes. For what? Store of value. I've been talking to you. Man, I have been preaching this from last year for you guys, to you guys. Store of value. As long as, as long as Bitcoin just is alive, like a brick of gold, baby. These these institutional investors are going to gobble it up as long as Ethereum. And I know, and I said it before, it's a platform token. Yeah, man, but it has to have DApps, it has to have this and that. They're not going to give a fuck about that. All right, that's for you tech nerds. They're not going to care about that. It's a commodity. These are the taxes on it. Bang. That's how these guys are going to look at Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Straight up commodities. All the technical stuff that a lot of you guys look at or that a lot of people just, you know, look at to compare blockchains and all that. For those three right there, and the S, yeah, I know, Bitcoin Cash too, motherfuckers. But I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to diss that Bitcoin Cash thing. Uh, look, look, just my opinion. I'm not telling you to do your money, but <laughs> fuck that Bitcoin Cash thing. It's not going to, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. You know. All right, all right. I'm, I'm not going to get into it, but they're not going to do that. So, <clears throat> fuck, are you going to read us the story or what? I know. Let's get through this. 
When it comes to block rewarding, having proof of work coins such as the ones listed above become harder to mine. Bringing into the question the scarcity of the assets in terms of supply and demand. Oh, my bad. Uh, did we read that one already? <laughs> I kept you guys. I'm sorry. So, let's come on. Just scroll down, motherfucker, and read from there. <laughs> but guys, you know I love you guys. Just having fun around these parts. It is because of this that there is evidence suggesting that harder difficulty in acquiring the aforementioned coins could lead to bullish tendencies for their prices. Now a trifecta of having. Litecoin is the first of the three. So, oh, brothers. All right, hold on. Let's read. Litecoin is the first of the three that is expected to get harder to mine as its having is due in August of this year. Let me write this down because I want to say some shit to you guys. I want to say some shit to you guys. August. is in August of this year. Ethereum is reducing its block reward by 33%. Oh, in February. Oh, I'm going like, oh, okay. True, true. <laughs> Being silly, guys. And Bitcoin's having, oh, yeah, that's the one. That's the one I first heard of. That's why I didn't talk about this having thing. I thought it was Bitcoin. And they were like, yeah, May 2020. Well, I was like, who's a fuck about that? I'll talk about that when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> but then lately, you know, and then I and then I discovered about the Litecoin and Ethereum ones. So while these data's dates, sorry, seem quite far off, especially in a quick moving cryptocurrency market, it has been suggested by a trader that there is there has been uh there has historically been a Bitcoin pump a year before its halvings. So this guy talks some shit. Blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with all that crap. Who cares? So, Bitcoin is expected to see its block reward decline by 50% by in May to 2020, uh, which will decrease the rate in which new coins are mined. The block reward halving will limit the circulating supply of Bitcoin. If the demand... Uh, limit. Limit the supply. Scarcity. Scarcity creates value. Supply and demand. If the demand for the asset remains the same or increases, it could have an impact on its price trend. Um, all right, so, all right, let's read this shit too, though, because so these are people who say the halving isn't going to do anything. However, there's also evidence suggesting that these halvings have already been factored in. But even if it were so, it is difficult to conclude absolutely. Chain analysis, remember chain analysis. Those are the fuckers that uh, the Winklevosses, oh, we're going to talk about them in a second. And all these guys are using to for price discovery. Well, just to show that there's no shenanigans going on uh, on their exchanges. It is complex to conclude whether the decline in the circulating supply of Bitcoin is already priced in. That's a very complex question. On the one hand, Direct circulations about market cap do not take lost coins into consideration. Considering how highly speculative the field is, those market cap calculations may make it into economic models of the market that impact spending activity. All right. And that's it. All right. So, bang. Just wanted to show you guys that. The having. So, keep your eyes on it. Some of these guys, I've been reading articles. Some of them are saying it's going to make, you know, the scarcity thing. And so that's why I read this article because, yeah, scarcity does create a price influx of something. Yeah, if there's less of it, well, the price is going to go up. It's scarcer. <laughs> you know, but then there's other ones that are saying, and that's what you read at the end of the article there where they said, you know, it ain't going to do much. I think it's going to do something once the pros get here so i hope the having i hope the pros are here by the having now bang look at this shit right here you guys know me man 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 i've been loving these winklevoss kids for a minute here man right right oh there it is there's the words right i've been loving these winklevoss kids for a minute they've been bending over backwards bending over backwards to get regulated but look at this stuff right here Oh, and Ripple Lovers, I got one for you tomorrow. Man, man, Ripple Lovers. 
because this is about stable coins, this Gemini stable coin. Let me tell you something, Ripple lovers. <laughs> you think your XRPs are going to move money around the world? Banks around the world are making their own stable coins. And like I told you, Christine Lagarde told the banks to do that. She's the leader of the IMF, the chief. Oh, she's the IMF chief, motherfucker. That's her. Christine Lagarde from France. <laughs> she was caught for fraud charges. She went to court for fraud charges, but she got off. <laughs> yes, brothers, that's how deep I am into <laughs> markets. I know these people personally. Not personally, but yes, fuck sticks. I actually know their shit. Yeah, Christine Lagarde, she told him. Make your own fucking coins, boys. And I've uh, the only reason I don't have the story today is because I wanted to just bring up this stuff here. I'll bring up. I'll tell you right now what we're going to talk about. Tomorrow. Well, maybe Facebook. Bang remittances. Remember that ripple lovers. Oh, shit. Here comes Facebook. <laughs> remember, we read about it. Here they come. Here they come. They hired all these new people. And they bought a a a a, 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 a crypto company. Yes, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> they bought a crypto company yesterday. Bang! And ripple lovers, and here come the stable coins from the banks now. Yes, brothers. Yes. <laughs> oh shit! Bang! That's tomorrow shit. That's tomorrow shit. Oh shit, man! Stable coins, man. That's the new. Remember we talked about? We were talking about it last year. The stable coin wars, right? Yo, but, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't think it was going to become such a big deal. I thought stable coins were just going to be like, all right, you know, just, you know, kind of moving. Instead of moving fiat, you'll move a stable coin or something. It's kind of how I was. Look, look. I'm going to show you guys what stable coins are all the fuck about up in this bitch. Ripple lovers, stay stay tuned for tomorrow's show. <laughs> You're going to take over the world, are you? Oh, well, well, well. We'll see. So, but look, let's get back to our real shit here in America. Bang, look at these guys. You know I like these brothers. The Gemini, sh Gemini shuts down accounts over Gemini dollar. GUSD, stablecoin redemptions. What the fuck? And like I said, I didn't read this yet, so. This is a very controversial time for the Gemini exchange which was created by the two U.S. investors known as the Winklevoss brothers, Cameron and Tyler. According to Coindesk, two OTC over-the-counter OTC desks, the company has decided to shut down their accounts recently without offering any kind of explanation at all. Wait a second. Okay, so they're saying they, they shut down two, two of their OTC desks. According to the two OTC desks, which decided to remain anonymous in order to protect their reputation against any attacks, Gemini has decided to close them down as they attempted to redeem uh, Gemini USD tokens for fiat cash. GUSD is the first stablecoin created by the exchange and it can, in theory, be traded by fiat currency at any time that the holder, holder <laughs> wishes. Uh, however, these claims state that the company did not let the investors exchange the money. Oh, they're saying Gemini did some shenanigans. They didn't let the people get their money. Look, look, look. That's how it was. You guys know I'm a Forex trader. I'm a professional Forex trader. And when the Forex market first started opening in on the internet, that's how it was, man. Exchanges, they were straight up ripping off people. So a lot of exchanges were opened in Europe first in terms of the Forex market. And so a lot of guys had their money in Greece. Yo, man, Greece, some people were trying to get their money back. Greece, those exchanges would just be like, fuck you. Come sue us. Yeah. And if you're a guy with only 10 Gs, they know you don't have the money to fucking go over there and sue them to get your money back. And so they would just steal people's money, man. That's what I'm telling you. And that's why I want you to understand that. Like, I've been through the buildings of markets. I was here during the dot-com bubble. Yeah, I'm 44 years old. I was here during that time. Yeah, I was a college student. I saw what happens when, you know, Microsoft's and Cisco's and these new technologies come out. And look, look, as a Forex trader, I was here from the beginning. So I've seen what happens when shitty little exchanges and markets 
uh, sorry, not markets, exchanges come out, fucking rip people off and everything, and then you need proper regulation, and then the market becomes you know, proper. You don't, you're not, you know, you're not afraid to lose your money and all that. And that's what we're going through here. It's a double combo. It's a combo of a forex market, and then it's global, and so everyone's going to come with their own laws. But it's just like the dot com bubble in that it's a new technology revolution, right? And I've been trading through it. And so that's why, you know, it's good for you to be here, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, you know, that's who you're listening to. You know what I mean? I'm not a kid or or someone, you know, uh, you know, who has some regular job type of thing or something. My, my markets, I am, you know, I'm a Forex trader. I'm a freelance Forex trader. Bang. You know what I mean? I know markets. And that's why when you see me here and I point to you and I say, you will be rich. I'm not fucking joking. I know it. Like, I know it. I mean, depending on what you have and how much you own. But, you know, if you've been listening around here, you should be good. All right. Enough of that. Holy, what the hell was all that? All right. So one of the OTC trades, which is based in Latin America, tried to redeem millions of dollars worth of GUSD tokens. But the account was closed before that was allowed to happen. Gemini sent an email to the person who managed the account and said that it had, had had to shut it down, but unable to elaborate on the specific on the specifications for this decision, which enraged the OTC desk. Wow, what the fuck? Gemini was directly contacted by Coindesk, but the exchange decided to remain silent until the time of our report. So obviously, you guys know I'm going to be keeping an eye on this. I mean, man, man. I'm not gonna bullshit you, man. I was, I've been being happy with this Gemini thing, man. These Winklevoss kids, man. We need legitimacy, right? Like we need legitimacy. So I don't want any more, you know, Mount Goxes and whatnot. So Gemini may have made a, a bad move last year. Let's see what they're saying here. There's plenty of speculation for the reasons behind Gemini's treatment of the investors, but one of the popular theories have to do with the fact that Gemini took some measures that were originally made to boost the impact of the launch of GOSD, but may have created unintended consequences. Eey. For instance, the exchange offered 1% discounts last year when it was selling the GUSD tokens for major investors. However, in order to receive this discount, which was very big when you consider that the price of a stablecoin does not change at all, the companies had to agree to not trade the assets immediately. So they were held in, they made them hold them. That's the shit that the uh, the guy, the, the the Ripple guy, the, the guy who analyzed the Ripple things talked about. He said that the real Ripples in, in, in like he said that this, watch this. These XRPs, yeah, it says that there's, uh, how many of them? 41 billion, but that's not actually true. Because many of these were given by the company to other companies, and those companies or people, individuals, are not allowed to sell them until a further date. So really, you shouldn't say that they're in circulation because they're not allowed to be used. It's the same as, uh, you know, the 60% of the ripples that Ripple Labs owns, right? They're not in circulation. Yeah, they're just holding them. Eh. Uh, yeah, all right. So I guess that's what they're saying here. Um, so at this time, the deal was offered to the unnamed Latin American OTC desk, but they wanted to buy the tokens to, the, to redeem them into fiat. So they did not accept the deal. After that, they found other ways to acquire GUSD tokens for their desk. After that, the trader said that he was warned by Gemini when he got the tokens that redeeming them could hurt the stablecoin. Oh, so this is some internal bullshit. Um, the other OTC desk, which is based in the United States, was able to redeem its tokens, but it had its account shut down soon after, according to, soon after, according to CoinDesk. So it looks like the Winklevoss. I'm going to tell you really what I think. The Winklevoss mothers are allow mothers, brothers are allowing allowing people to buy this stuff, but they're not allowing them to to redeem them. Um. Yeah, that's weird, man. So the represent the uh, the represent 
The representatives from the unnamed USD-based OTC desk affirms that Gemini has used the strategy of selling the tokens cheaper in order to maximize its market cap, but that the exchange is against people redeeming the tokens now. Okay, I see exactly. Exactly. They're like, look, 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 you can buy them all you want as they go up and everything, but they're like, look, we're not letting you sell them. That's a little sneaky. I don't know about that. I don't know if I like that. So in both cases, Gemini is being accused of shutting down the accounts without offering an expla any, exp any explanation, which prompted the two OTC desks to believe that the reason was the whole issue with redeeming the tokens before most of them are sold without discounts. So, according to reports from the industry, even some big players are afraid to redeem their tokens and lose their accounts. Gemini, if this story is to be believed, sold them tokens that they are now unable to redeem without being afraid, which is a very serious accusation. Yeah, dude, it's like, fuck. Fuck. That's, that, that right there is a kicker. That's a kick in the nuts. <laughs> Damn, bang, that's a kick in the nuts. Man, that sucks right there. Because, you know, institutional investors, if, if these are the kind of shenanigans that are going to go on with a a, 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 a fucking um, exchange, which is supposed to be so, you know, regulatorily sound. Shit. What are they going to do with others, man? Like. You see what I'm saying, guys? You know, man, I've been preaching on here. I've been watching these guys. I've been talking to what, uh, uh, you know, reporting on it. Going through all this stuff to be regulated proper and everything. And now this is what the shenanigans are pulling. Not cool. not cool at all all right let's read on brothers it is well known fact among the industry that gemini caters to institutional investors from wall street yes bang well if you're doing this shit fuck sticks you're not gonna get any fucking institutions oh my gosh so it is not a complete surprise that this, the exchange is not caring a lot about otc desks yeah, it doesn't mean you fuck people over. Gemini often describes itself as a regulated exchange and a New York trust company. Because of this, it does not allow many potential customers on the platform. Exactly. Regular guys like me and you and certain folks can't. Uh, can we? Oh, actually, what am I talking about? I have a Gemini account. <laughs> you idiot. You have a Gemini account. But just, I don't know. Whatever. So an official. That's true. I forgot about that. An official statement from the company has already affirmed that the fact that many people do not pass on the company's test of admission is a feature, not a bug, and that it is necessary for the company to build trust. We are not building trust if people don't get to take their money out. One of the main problems of the whole story is that these OTC desks... Oh, yeah, all right. So if you're new here... I should explain to these guys what an OTC is. OTC desk. Over the counter. OTC stands for over the counter. Over the counter is, you know, if you have a lot of money or whatever, you know, you're a, you're a hedge fund or whatever, you don't buy like what we buy on. What we buy on is called the spot market. So when you buy an exchange on an exchange, you buy on the spot market, and that is $3,419.38 right now on the spot. Actually, hold on. Let me even refresh it. I'll show you right now. Bang. $3,420.61 is how much you pay for a Bitcoin right now on the spot. Now, these fuck, uh, these guys, uh, we didn't even get to the BitTorrent. Oh, another story. Holy. All right. Man, I've been talking. It seems like an hour already. All right. OTC guys, though, these are big money whales. These are your whales, what you want to call whales. <laughs> you know, we call them high net worth individuals in the real world. And these whales... So whales don't buy, or whales, uh, hedge funds, whatever kind of fund you are, 
you don't buy you know like us on the spot market you buy otc over the counter so you talk directly to the miner so in the bitcoin world you have miners these miners they have hundreds of thousands of coins and these guys these high net worth individuals whales hedge funds whatever they go through a broker and they buy directly from a miner so for instance right now blah 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 we just looked at it bitcoin's three thousand four hundred and twenty dollars yeah, these guys, they don't buy one Bitcoin. They don't buy 100 Bitcoin. They buy like 1,000 or 10,000 Bitcoin. And so they tell the miner, look, I'll buy 10,000 Bitcoin off you right now for 3,000 apiece. Well, the miner's like, all right, well, 10,000, fuck it, let's go, all right? And that's what OTC is, over the counter. It works in every market. If, I'm a, if I wanna buy Microsoft shares and I wanna buy 10 million of them, yeah, I don't go to E-Trade. <laughs> there aren't 10 million Microsoft shares on E-Trade to buy, and plus, you don't get the deal. So they go over the counter, okay? All right. So one of the main problems of the whole story is that these OTC desks may be Gemini clients, but they are also competitors in the industry. Some sources told Coinbase that more than $133 million US dollars worth of GUSD has been redeemed so far and that the business is moving as usual. The same source affirmed that these OTC desks may be lobbying against Coindesk as well. What? Mostly for monetary reasons. However, the reports against Gemini continue, and a third OTC desk has also complained that it had its account shut down this time because it had offered a competing product. Oh, so a bunch of OTC guys, they bought stuff and they bought <laughs> some other coin and Gemini shut them down. So that's a little sneakiness on Gemini's part, guys. I just want you to be aware. I mean, it doesn't really affect us and our money or anything, but just, you know, you know, these guys are applying for the ETFs and stuff like that. When the SEC sees stuff like that, I mean, what is it going to mean? Well, tell us, Shamari. I don't know what it was going to mean. <sighs> but it it's not going to be good. So I'm going to keep you updated. Don't worry about that. But bang! There you go, my brother. Who is it? <laughs> Who is this guy's name? There he is. Muse the millionaire. He said, Shamari, please talk about BitTorrent. Talk it on a video. Bang, Muse. <laughs> you got me. You got it, brother. Bang, we got BitTorrent token. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, you know I like to finish the day always on a good story about something. Usually it's some good regulation, but there was no regulation or anything. So let's talk about some money, babies. Bang, further details have been released regarding BitTorrent's BTT token airdrop scheduled to take place in six days' time. Bang, the BitTorrent token, BTT, has been introduced as a medium exchange for BitTorrent users enabling the purchase of downloadable media, giving users the opportunity to participate in crowdfunding on the platform. Bang! File sharing will also offer rewards to users on the platform. Bang! The company, expl <laughs> the company explains some of the other benefits. All right. I'm just trying to give that brother a little energy. Yuck, luck. Existing big touring clients, and look, 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 will implement an optional Set of backward compatible protocol extensions will allow them to bid and receive bids for their bandwidth. Bang, you're going to be selling bandwidth like motherfuckers, motherfuckers. Bang, all right. Selling bandwidth. It'd be interesting to see how much you get paid to sell your bandwidth. Because imagine you could sell, I mean, I, I doubt it, this will happen. But if any of you find out, tell me one day in the comments. If you can sell enough bandwidth, to cover your internet cost, you know, for your bandwidth at home. You know what I mean? In other words, it pays your internet bill. <laughs> Bang! Back. That'd be interesting, because then America would just be selling bandwidth, right? We wouldn't be paying for any. Right? This one blockchain would be paying all of America's bandwidth kind of thing. Look, guys, I know, I know. Shmoy, man. I know, man. I do have an imagination. So, looking in tandem, while I'm bidding in. Bang. All right. 
The firm is airdropping free BTT tokens to Tron holders. And it has been announced that the airdrop will continue for six years. Wow. Until 11th February 2025, brothers. Bang, get your airdrops. The first snapshot will happen when Tron's block height reaches 6.6 .6 million. The initial airdrop will be a supply of BTT, BitTorrent tokens of 10 billion, 10 billion, eight, oh, sorry, I got the hiccups, 10 billion, 890 million, followed by a BTT, um, 990 million each month. Oh yeah, from the 11th of each of March. Remember we read this, guys. So every 11th of the month, you're just going to get free coin. So no minimum of Tron required to qualify for the BTT airdrops. The following wallets and exchanges will support the airdrops. So the following wallets and exchanges will support the airdrop. If you have your stuff, you have your Trons on here, bang, good to go. Following wallets and, air and, uh, and exchanges are Qcoin, bang, Binance, bang, OKX, bang, QOB. All right, we're not going to bang them all. QOB, BitHum, Upbit, Gate.io, Trust Wallet, BitPi, Kobo, Bibbox, Cointiger, ABCC, Wazirix, Adam, Atomic Wallet, DragonX, Coin Egg, MBAEX, Venapi, LiveCoin, Elapal, BitForex, Atomic Wallet. Did we just say Atomic Wallet? Tokonomy, Coin Super, BitTrue, Fcoin, BitZ, Bang Bang Bang, and Bang Bang Bang. Tron scan, motherfuckers. Bang! If you own Tron, I mean, I don't know why you have them anywhere else, but look, look, look. Those are the ones, guys. Wherever you have them. Uh, well, not wherever you have them. If you have them on any of these, bang, you're good to go. And then, of course, Tron scan, sons. Look. Look. Just keep it on Tron scan. Like, why the fuck are you fucking around with all this other shit? <laughs> so, look, look, look. According to BitTorrent, an additional BTT, 99 billion. <laughs> Holy, these numbers are so crazy. 99 billion, 990 million will be airdropped to longtime Tron holders, holders through online and offline events. So just sit down, throw your shit on Tron Scan or any of these, uh, obviously, that are supporting it. And just hold down and wait for Justin Sun to sprinkle you with Tron. That's what he does. He just sprinkles everybody, right? He's like, oh, do you have my Tron? Like, and he just sprinkles you with Tron all the time. Look, it's fucked up. I know, man. It's some weird shit. You guys know me. I'm from the traditional trading world. You got to earn your money. You know what I mean? I got to kill that guy and get his money. Here? Yeah, you, know, you just got fuckers like Sun just sprinkling you. Just a little sprinkle. Hey, Pollywood. Right? Justin Sun says, Pollywood. Hey, catch. Pollywood's like, oh, thank you for the Tron. <laughs> we all are. Oh, Shamari. Yes, Justin. Here. Bang. Oh, just sprinkled me with. Oh, thank you. So that's how it's going to go down, brothers. All right. I'm being silly. <laughs> Bang. Look. It is widely expected <laughs> that come 11 February, BitTorrent could come into immediate competition with similar file sharing outfits such as Upfiring, Flixo, Joystream, and LRBY Library, I guess is what. That shit's supposed to be. Although a boost in funding through the airdrop could be significant for the company's future. So bang! There you go, my brother. Bang! Where's the airdrop? Bang! And look at everyone's getting airdropped out the back of the cargo plane. These guys are probably some Navy SEALs about to go kill some fucking terrorists, actually. <laughs> but bang! That's how we roll around these parts. Yeah, we're special ops guys. That's what it is around here. When you're around here in cryptocurrency blockchain news, that's why I say, look, look, look. I'll put my subscribers against your subscribers any day. My motherfuckers know what custody is about. Tch, bitch ass, you don't even know what custody is. My subscribers know what futures are. Oh, not only what futures are, but which ones are needed. Bang, because these are my boys right here. Look at look at Ronquez. Bang, look at J-Will. Bang, look at Edwin. Bang, look at Bob. Bang, as I unleash them upon you. <laughs>
Bye. All right, brothers. Whoa, the fuel's kicking in. <laughs> Holy, this is a good show tonight. Bang, let's just get the shout out there. Let me get you back to your wives and lives. Because, man, I'm going to go on and on right now. I'm feeling real good. Shit, I'm feeling real good right now, brothers. Luck, luck, luck. See what I'm saying? Look at my brothers. Bang, there's the cryptocurrency. Look at look at everybody. Look at them all. Luck. Look at my boys. Yes. We're descending upon you, sons of bitches. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. My boys are special ops. My crew are special ops. You can have all the regular army guys, the cannon fodder. I got special ops boys. Those are the guys that do the killing. They're not meant to be killed. Bang, 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 bang. Yes, all right. That's to get out of here, man, because I'm, wow, I'm getting live, man. I got to get to trading. I got to get to fucking up some boys. Bang, here I come, motherfuckers, <laughs> tonight. I'm feeling good, brothers. Look, oh, so I sent you the guys the new airdrop tonight. Bang, go get that motherfucker. Blue C, and I gave you all, I mean, if you're watching this, you know, you know, my mom, you know get in there and get it. Oh, look at all these sons of bitches right here. Lisa, or no, no, Crypto Bridgie, not Lisa. Crypto Bridgie, bang, yeah, I'm here. Yes, bang, Hurricane Master. Bang, see you, brother. Bitcoin Kona, bang, see you, brother. Yes, TP Entertainment. You know what? You've been around for a while. I'm going to do like this. Bang, yes, I'm going to follow that motherfucker right there. Bang, DP Entertainment, you deserve a follow. Yes, yes, hello, hello, my name is Jay Will. Welcome, welcome, Shamari. Well, hey, Jay, Jay, calm down. Just bang, brother, bang. Settle down. <laughs> look, look, hey, well, he'll tell you something. Look, look, this motherfucker right here. Look, look. If you're willing to look into the darkness. <laughs> if you're willing to, if you're willing to look deep into the possibilities of the real world of economics, because that's the thing. I know I make fun of the guy, but. Well, I'm not making fun. The guy's a for uh, the guy's a computer programmer. I have total respect for Jwell, but I know I make that doctor's voice when I talk about him. But look, look, look! The shit he tells you, I'm a 19 year investor. Fuck sticks. I only listen to a fucker like this because what he's telling you, yeah, man, it's a possibility. Now it's a far stretch. That's the problem, Jwell. It's a far stretch. But look, look, look! Shit's possible. Shit's possible. So the darkness could ensue. And when it does, we'll have J. Will to help us. Oh, remember yesterday I told you guys, shut up, wife. I'm about that whole life. If you're new here, yeah, that's his shit. That's how he rolls. That's how he rolls, motherfuckers. Look, look, he's not here in the yap, yap, yap. Look, look, look. Oh, and especially that he's not here. Well, he doesn't have to hear the yap, yap, yap from the wife. His wife has crypto too. So they're probably just competing and shit, actually. Family that crypto together stays together. So, J Will, bang, Bob, bang, eight four four one one three two zero. Go get your crypto, bang, uh, your airdrops, bang. Yes, Radster, I believe that's him. Bang, I see you, brother. Got a new one here. We got CX, Cryptix, bang. See you, brother. Oh, and look at this son of a bitch right here. <laughs> By airdropper, airdropper, you son of a bitch! Go on, where is it? Where is it? Bang, bang, bang! <laughs> this motherfucker. But what did he say to me? He was saying something. What did he say? Oh, he laughed about yesterday's show because I said, <laughs> I said chicken, right? Look, look. Am I wrong? The fucking Bitcoin thing was wrapped in Ethereum. Right? A chicken best wrapped in bacon. <laughs> yeah. So, Ronquez, that son of a bitch. He loved it. Chicken best wrapped in bacon. <laughs> and look, that's how it goes, brothers. You know, I didn't make it. Yeah, I just report on it. All right, who else do we got? What do we got? Oh, and look at this, my girl down here. Jose Crypto, bang. And look at what this guy sent me. 
Bitcoin Kong, bang. Look at this. Yes, Bitcoin Kong. Bang. Look at my girl. Bang. Look at her. Bang. Look at you bitches. Bang. Look at her. Bang. Yes, Crypto Kong. We got to stop that. Ooh, they get a little in the brain, right? When you watch them too long. <laughs> but look at one more time. Bang. Yes. Bang. You guys know I love the bang. 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 Yes. Bang. One more. Bang. One more. Bang. All right, brothers. <laughs> Yo, guys. I got to get you the fuck back to your wives and lives because I'm going to sit here talking some shit. Duck, luck. Crypto tone. Bang. See you, brother. There he is. Poppy Wood. Poppy. Bang. And that should be it. We got the whole crew in there. Edwin, where you at, motherfucker? You crazy son of a bitch. Bang. You get a freestyle bang. All right. Let's get you back to your bang. Wives and lives. Back to my ugly face. Look, look. Let's chill it and kill it. Get you back to your wives' lives. Look, brothers. So, interesting day. <clears throat> yeah, that crypto having thing, man. So, they're going to make the, uh, the, um, the, uh, for the miners, it's going to be harder for them to mine, to mine stuff. And it's going to create scarcity, giving us, you know, well, scarcity creates demand well my bad my bad hold on that's not true hold on let's settle down <laughs> scarcity uh creates less of something so hopefully when people want it bang it makes it more valuable there we go that's the way to say that shit yeah man and then second story guys fuck this gemini thing man i know man i was preaching about these guys man i've been i'm not lying man because you guys know you guys know me Good luck, man. I want all of these things to work. All of these exchanges, all of these projects, the crypto. So exchanges are one thing, but then I want all of these projects to work. I know a lot of you guys are like, yeah, man, our project's going to kill this project. Our project's going to kill that one. It ain't killing fuck all, buddy. I want all of them to work. And fuck, you know, to give legitimacy for when the um, institutional investors arrive, it makes this place look serious, right? Makes cryptocurrency look serious. You know, if everyone's just arguing and complaining and fucking around, like, it looks like a kid's fucking playground, right? Like, fuck. So, and then, 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 and then there's shit like this, right? Fucking guys coming out with coins and then they're, now they're freezing accounts on letting people send their money, sell their money. Like, look, well, uh, excuse me. You know, you know, Gemini, what the fuck? What, you're holding people's money hostage now? Yeah, they bought your stable coin, now they want to sell. What the fuck? And now you're holding it hostage, no, we're not letting you sell your stuff? That's not cool, man. That's that's not a good look. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let's put it that way. This isn't a good look, brothers. This isn't a good look. I don't like that. I mean, there's other things coming on backed and other stuff coming online, but this Gemini thing... I guess they disappointed me a little. <laughs> I thought they would be better than this. Anyways, ba bang! Bit torrent. Look, look, look. All right, I gotta cheer my. Hold on. Ah, cheer up, Shamari. Holy the whole <laughs> Gemini thing. I just fall down. Don't get down about that. Don't worry about that shit, man. That's one fucking exchange. There'll be many more coming anyway. Bit torrent airdrop. Bang, guys. So, hodl. Just, I mean, if you own Tron, just put this shit on the Tron scan thing and just wait. <laughs> but get it on it. If you don't want to go on Tron scan and all that, you want to keep your stuff on an exchange that could be hacked. Oh, I'm just saying, just saying. Look, look, let's get real. Let's get real. Just keep it on Tron scan, man. Like, but I know what you're saying, though. I know, I know. If you keep it on an American exchange, at least you can sue someone to get your money back. So, bang, that's it, though, guys. Holy, oh, my gosh. See, I just want to talk and talk and talk to you guys now, now that I'm feeling the rocket fuel. <laughs> so but let's get out of here. Let's shell it and kill it. Get you back to your wives and lives. Bang. Luck, luck, luck. Press the subscribe button now, right now. Bang. Good job. Now, press that little bell. Bang. That's going to give you automatic updates. And luck, luck, luck. My name's Shamari Clark. This is the favorite time of my day. I love talking money. I'm a money guy. I'm a Forex trader. Professional. Bang, 19 years. I love talking money. I love talking crypto. 
And bang, it's favorite time of my day. So look, look, look. And I'm always on duty. Oh, I dig deep. Oh, I dig deep. Because I'm a Forex trader, so I already know what to look for. So, guys, luck, luck, luck. It's your Mark Clark. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night tonight with your wives and kids and have a good time. Bang, this is Shamari Clark. Bang, always on duty. I am always on duty, brothers. Over and out.